866-660-5759. Ted Cruz has broken free and will be able to join us here in just a couple of minutes. So it seems like as good a time as any to replay his golden moment being blocked by a uh, Biden administration operative while trying to shoot video inside one of the migrant centers. Please give dignity to the people. Please give dignity to the people. So you worked for the commissioner, your senior advisor. You were hired two weeks ago, and you're instructed to ask us to not have any pictures taken here. Please respect the people. Because the, the political rules. leadership at DHS does not want the American people to know it. Please respect the rules, You keep sir. standing in, in front of the pictures, so Please you don't want the, the pictures rules. taken. The rules are arbitrary, Please and they're designed the to keep the American people in the dark. give the people, people dignity dark. and respect. That's all we ask. Well, dignity no, it's and not. respect. You're asking, is this please, dignity and respect? Look at these people. There, there's a pandemic. Please give dignity and respect to the people. Let, let me ask, ask you. you. There, there's a I pandemic. I respectfully ask you, sir. There is a pandemic. Is this hearted, respecting the rights of these I kids? Ask you. The pandemic references because they are stacked like cordwood in there. Please are you respecting the, the rights of these this kids? This is not a zoo, sir. Please don't. <laughs> oh, this is not a zoo. Well, exactly. Uh, I've, I've seen zoo animals in, in better conditions than this. The people. You're right. And this is a dangerous place. Please don't treat the people And your like policies, un unfortunately, you, are trying to hide them. I understand That's you were instructed you. when 18 I senators came down here. I respect respect the people. Give them dignity and respect. I respect, respect them, and I want to fix this situation. We all want and to fix this, the administration this, you're working for is anymore. responsible for these conditions. Please respect the people with dignity and, and respect. And I ask you to respect the, the people as well. This I am is respecting not you. Respect. I am respecting this is, the people. This is not respect. This is not respect. So, oof. Anyway, all right. That's, that uh, that was something. That was something. And I think the timing here is going to work out superbly. And yes, it I got to boy, hang on a second. Senator Ted Cruz is here. Welcome, sir. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Mark. How are you doing? I am doing great. The the gods of timing have, have smiled on us literally seconds ago. I played for the second time today. The one minute and 10 seconds of you and the lady at, at the facility. Take us behind the scenes on that. Who is the, I don't need to dox her. I don't need her name. But what's the business title? What's on her business card? The woman who is preventing you and your team from getting a little video inside these facilities so that we can know what's going on in there. Well, it, it was quite remarkable, and let me give you a little bit of the backstory, which is last week uh, I began organizing and brought together a, a trip of what ended up being 19 senators to go to the border uh, to see firsthand the crisis that is unfolding. Uh, and at the time, we requested that the media be allowed to come. And as you know, the Biden administration has had a total media blackout on allowing any reporters, any cameras into the Customs and Border Patrol facility uh, that are overflowing and that are very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Well, once again, the Biden administration said, no, no media. We don't want them because and, and the reason, by the way, they said the media, there's a threat of covid because, you know, the reporter, the cameraman might have covid. So we can't let him in. Right. Um, it, it, it's spatially absurd. So we went down there uh, and a number of us, myself included, decided to pull out our phones. And if they weren't going to let the media in, we were going to take pictures and videos because the American people had a right to know what was going on. And so. Uh, we began doing so, and, and uh, this young lady showed up about halfway through the trip. She wasn't there at the beginning, but she showed up about halfway through the trip. Uh, and she began yelling at senators. Anytime they'd pull out their phone and take a picture or video, she'd yell. So she'd say, you got to stop. Um, and, and she began tailing me quite closely. Um, and, and so I asked her, I said, well, tell me, what do you do? Uh, and she was very evasive. She didn't want to tell me what she did. Mm -hmm. She said, well, I work at CB CBP. And I said, well, okay. What do you do at CBP? Well, well, I work in Washington. Okay. <laughs> what do you do in Washington? I, I, after cross-examining repeatedly, uh, she finally admitted that, that she was the senior advisor to the commissioner of Customs and Border Patrol. Mm -hmm. And when she admitted that, I then said, well, how long have you been on the job? She says, well, I've been with CBP for 14 years uh, over, over, my, over my life. I said, Okay. How long have you been on this job? Two weeks. So finally, after extensive questioning, she explained that she had been hired to work for the commissioner two weeks earlier. And it became evident, Mark, that her job was to be the political minder. Her job was to do everything she could to try to stop the American people from seeing what's going on there. And, and I got to say afterwards, uh, one, of the, one of the folks down there was Steve Daines, the senator from uh, Montana, who's been a number of times over to China, and and, and he laughed. He said, 
it, it reminded him of his trips to China where the Communist Party would send a minder whose job it was to make sure you only saw what they wanted you to see and you didn't take any pictures they didn't want you to, to take. And so she, as, as the video that I tweeted out shows, she tried to block me from taking videos of the abysmal conditions there, uh, and I declined to comply with, with her political request. Red Square under Mao and Donna, Texas under Biden, cameras not allowed. <laughs> and, and, it is, and it's important to say that it is because we have a thought in our head, more than one, about the dignity and treatment of these yeah. kids. That is why you seek video images, because as we've learned from Vietnam on, pictures on television change minds. Well, that's exactly right. And, and I got to tell you, I've spent a lot of time down to the border. I've gone to the border many times under Barack Obama, many times under Donald Trump. Under both administrations, the media was always allowed in those facilities. Under George W. Bush, the media was allowed. Under Bill Clinton, the media was allowed. And, and it is only the Joe Biden administration that has imposed this media blackout. And the reason is that what they're doing is disgraceful and it's indefensible. That, that the Democrats spent four years screaming about kids in cages under Donald Trump. Now, they never admitted that those cages were built by Barack Obama. And now Joe Biden is building bigger cages, and they are packed beyond capacity. The Donna facility is built to hold 1,000, but with COVID capacity, its capacity is 250. There are over 4,000 people in that facility. That is exceeding its capacity by 1,500%. Little boys and little girls, they're not six feet apart. They're not three feet apart. They're laying on the floor because there are no beds side-by-side side touching under reflective emergency blankets. It is, it is a COVID super spreader. The rate of, of, of positive testing in that facility is 10%. And, and the reason why I thought those pictures were so important it is the American people have a right to know to stop it. And so her talking point of respect their dignity I'm sorry, packing kids in cages where they can catch a life-threatening disease in a global pandemic is not dignity. And I would note when it comes to privacy, Mark, that my team, before we put any pictures out, before we put any videos out, we blurred every face so that no individual is personally identifiable. But you can see the horrific Biden cages. And, and what they're concerned about is the dignity of their political reputation, not those little kids who they are allowing to be abused on their watch. Senator Ted Cruz is here, and his eyes and ears, electronic and uh, biological, will move from the border itself to the K. Bailey Hutchison Center. That is your, uh, that's the schedule on the schedule today, correct? The Dallas facility. Uh, correct. So I, I am headed up to Dallas right now. We'll be going to the K. Bailey Hutchison uh, Center, where, where they are also detaining children. And, and so I'm going to see the conditions there and see if it, I suspect they will be better conditions than the Donna facility. The, the, the Donna facility is a gigantic tent city uh, that, that they had to build because the crisis situation is so bad. And, and so the, those conditions were, were shockingly bad. Um, I don't know what I will see at, at the K. Bailey Hutchison Center, but I will certainly tell you and tell everyone what, what it is that the Biden administration is doing because they – they don't want people to know. And, I, and, you know, yesterday I wrote President Biden and asked him to let media come into the KBH Center. And, and uh, uh, you know, at least so far, they don't seem willing to do so. Well, I, I have a feeling that we're involved in a, in a gamesmanship here of everything is relative. That you got to cram them into Donna because that's better than starving at the Rio Grande. we got to get them to Dallas because that's better than Donna. Pretty soon, the K. Bailey Hutchison Center will be portrayed as hell on earth. we got to get them out of there so that they can be atomized out across all four American time zones uh, in order to place them in homes to disappear forever awaiting amnesty. Or am I too cynical? Well, you're not too cynical, and that is clearly what's happening. Uh, in, in the last month, in the month of February, there were over 100,000 illegal immigrants detained on the border. Of those, roughly 30,000 were children. As of today, the Biden administration has over 16,000 children in detention. They are trying to move as quickly as possible to move those children out, to get them into the country, for them to stay forever. 
and 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 they think that is humane. And so Joe Biden has told the world, if you come here as a child, you get to stay. Well, unsurprisingly, the effect of doing that is a massive influx of children coming. When I went out on on midnight patrol with the border patrol two nights ago, we saw literally lines, caravans of children uh, walk, walking on the trails up from the Rio Grande. We saw mothers carrying infants, nursing. And, and the thing to remember, Mark, the people who are bringing these folks over, they're not social workers. They're not kind, com- compassionate, and loving. They are vicious criminal cartels. They are physically assaulting these children. They're sexually assaulting these children. Uh, you know, a significant percentage of the little girls, 11, 12, 13 years old, are put on birth control before they make the trip because the odds are so high that they're going to be raped in transit. It is not compassionate and it is not humane to put little girls and little boys in the custody of human traffickers. And that's what Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are doing with, with their political decisions that, that, that have created this crisis. How did we get to a girl component when the story first said it was going to be all boys, all like six, 15 to 18? How did both the age expand out and, and girls get included? Well, it, it's because of political decisions the Biden administration made. In particular, they said uh, that if you have a family unit that includes a child, that all of you can stay. And, and so suddenly uh, we started seeing lots and lots of groups that said they were families. It used to be that the vast majority of illegal immigrants were young men who arrived alone. Now we're seeing this massive influx uh, of daddies and kids. And, and when they've done DNA testing of the kids, they discover a significant percentage, somewhere on the order of 30%, are not related to the kids, are not, in fact, a family unit. But what the cartels are doing, look, the cartels are listening to what Joe Biden is saying. And so they now tell if you're a young man who wants to smuggle into this country, bring a kid and you get to stay. And the cartels are literally, Mark, renting children out to to young men. Many of them have criminal records. Many of them are gang members. And, and, and when the kids make the journey, Sometimes the Border Patrol agents are seeing the same kids come on multiple trips with different men because each child is a Biden get-out-of-jail-free pass. It, it, it is inhumane, and it, and it is foolish. Last couple of minutes with Senator Ted Cruz. You mentioned 19 senators. I'm going to go way out on a limb and suggest no Democrats. Yet I could almost see, if I blur my eyes and, and engage wishful thinking, a, a Joe Manchin, a Kristen Cinema. Might you get a Democrat senator down there on one of these trips? Well, we did not have any Democrats come with us, uh, but uh, I understand Manchin is coming to the border. I'm glad he's coming, but but right now there seem to be no Democrats in Washington concerned about the situation or willing to do anything about it. They're not willing to stand up to Joe Biden. Yeah, I think that's what they're concerned about is the optics. I mean, the, uh, will will Joe Biden, will Kamala Harris? I mean, it, the president, uh, former President Trump said he was going to make the trip at some point, which I think is great. I think it crystallizes the difference between the policies we used to have and the policies we have now. Well, that's right. And it, it, it's worth understanding that this was preventable. This didn't have to happen. It was a result of three specific decisions Joe Biden made in his first week as president. Number one, he immediately halted construction of the border wall. So we saw sections of the border wall that had been completed that were effective, and then other sections that weren't done that they just left with holes in them. They, they left rebar just laying out there rusting, mm-hmm. and, of course, the traffic is going through those holes. Number two, Biden reinstated the failed catch-and-release policy, which means when they apprehend someone, they give them a court date sometime in the future, they let them go. <laughs> And everyone knows the vast majority of them never come back. Yeah. And number number three, and this was the most in, indefensible, they ended the Remain in Mexico agreement. And this was a big deal. President Trump negotiated with the government of Mexico an agreement that immigrants from Central America who crossed illegally into Mexico would remain in Mexico while their asylum cases were pending in the United States. And Mark, that agreement worked. 
And it resulted in last year we had the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years. Joe Biden on week one ripped that international agreement to shreds, said we want all these folks here, even though they're testing COVID positive at a seven times higher rate than the Texas population. Biden said we want them here and it produced what we are seeing now is the largest influx of illegal immigrants in 20 years. And it's why Joe Biden says he's not in charge. He put Kamala Harris in charge. And then she said she's not in charge. And as far as I can tell, nobody's in charge. And this problem is only getting worse and worse and worse. And the media is apologizing and hiding, helping Joe Biden hide and claim it's not a crisis. Senator Ted Cruz, Dallas bound as we speak to the K. Bailey Hutchison Center. He'll have much to share from there. We'll pay attention, and you can too, on Twitter at Ted Cruz. And the Senate site is cruz.senate.gov. Safe travel, sir. Thank you. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you, Mark. God bless. You bet. God bless. Senator Ted Cruz on the way to the KBH. 854, Mark Davis. 6.50 a.m. The answer.